We're back with a new historical romance author guide. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm going to be focusing my historical romance author guide on an author known as Celeste Bradley. Now, I don't think a lot of people on booktube talk about Celeste Bradley, the historical romance author, mostly because she is not that well known. She has written a lot of books in the past, but her books weren't actually published from Avon Romance, which is definitely a huge publisher of historical romance. And I feel like a lot of people know all the authors from Avon Romance and they're definitely more advertised and marketed here on booktube and in the book community but um she did write books for I think St. Martin's Press so she is out there her books are on the shelves and she has a lot of books what happened is that I also think that Celise took a break from writing and I don't think that she has been releasing any more new titles so far but it could be wrong and I could just not get my facts straight. But with her, an interesting backstory is that she was one of my first few historical romance authors that I did read when I first ventured and took a deep dive into historical romance when I was in high school. So I read one of her novels, which was called When She Said I Do, which is part of her Wicked Worthington series. And it completely opened up my eyes to historical romance and what it could be. And it was kind of like a breath of fresh air from the typical historical romances that I was picking up at that time. What I mean by it is that with this book it had different elements of suspense to it, it had many secondary characters that added value to the plot and also had their own storylines and it kind of made me understand that historical romances doesn't always have to focus on a main couple and having you know like the regular relationship breakdown typical ideas that would tear these two apart but with Celeste, what I saw was that we had outside influences that were impacting the relationship. And that's why I kind of really liked Celeste. And that's also why I went back and bought all her backlisted titles and her older titles. I went to thrift stores. I went to thrift stores online. I went to outlets to purchase all the titles that I could find of hers. And I even completed some of the missing books in the series by just going to regular um, thrift books online which is like a US website. So I collected all her books and I kind of left it on my shelf for a very, very long time and let it collect dust, mostly because I thought that Celeste would be a new author that I would really like and that I would binge read. And then um, it's just going to be, you know, to the moon and there and, you know, I'm going to be really ecstatic and my life would be complete. But I finally decided to, you know, bite the bullet and to actually read her series and one of the series that I did pick up from her is just a trilogy so I'm only going to be talking about three books from her today but it's part of her Heiress Brides series and overall with Celeste I still really like her writing but there are some things that bother me about it and I will go in a deep dive starting with the first book. So Desperately Seeking a Duke is book number one in Heiress Bride series and this one overall my rating was a fairly average rating. It was three out of five stars. So this book follows our main heroine who is a daughter of a vicar and basically she has gotten herself in a little bit of trouble because she's a little bit boy crazy and her hormones are kind of driving all over the place. This book definitely set a very clear romantic comedy tone to it which within the very first few chapters because I've never read a historical romance where our heroine is so like openly obsessed with how good looking guys are in their shirts and in their trousers like you can basically in the first few chapters she is staring openly at all these hot guys around her at this dance and it's just so funny and so hilarious but her family doesn't find her, her hilarious and her family actually just wants her to settle down and to quickly marry because she does have kind of a scandal behind her name and the whole family wants to protect her and doesn't want the society to figure it out first before she is off married. So they kind of are on a time crunch looking for someone to marry. And so when someone actually gives her a marriage proposal, she is thrilled by it because she actually thinks that it is the mark key of Brookhaven and like she thinks it's like this one guy and she's like really excited for it but turns out when she accepted the marriage proposal it was actually for the Marquis's older brother who she is not that smitten with. 
So then now they're kind of stuck in this entanglement of marriage of convenience, forced marriage, and they fall in love. I was really expecting this one to be a four to five stars novel simply because the first couple of chapters and maybe even like the first half of the book I really enjoyed. I was like laughing out loud. I was cleaning my room while listening to audiobook really was enjoying the banter that was happening, really enjoying Phoebe, our main female heroine, and like listening to her thoughts. But then somewhere towards the end, I just got really sick and tired of our two characters and the main problems that they were getting themselves into. And then also the ending was just very drawn out and it felt like it was a lot longer than it needed to be, even though that these books aren't as long as typical historical romances. So with that being said, I moved on to book number two. So The Duke Next Door is book number two. And with this, I also forgot to mention that this overarching story in this trilogy, what happens is that these three girls, a part of the same family, need to find someone to marry and it has to be a duke or else um, they can't have the money in the will from their late grandfather. So with book number two, our main heroine actually marries the Marquis of Brookhaven that was mentioned in book number one and who is the younger brother of the main hero in the first book. Very confusing, I know but he is set out to become the next Duke. So she is obviously intrigued and they actually have this really quick romance. They kiss, they fall in love, and then they have a quick marriage and you think that's the happily ever after. But what actually happens is that our main hero is hiding a very big secret. And when she realizes the secret, she is so angry, she is so fed up, she feels like she's so betrayed by him and she doesn't feel like that they can ever have a working relationship with each other and let alone fall in love with each other properly and then after this is the romance of her being more accustomed to her new life and to learn more about the husband that she married very quickly and earlier on this one i gave another three out of five stars the sentiment that i'm starting to get with Celise bradley's novels are that it starts off really good it starts off four to five star range but then somewhere towards the middle and the end there's always something that is like really wrong with it that makes me like kind of really angry this one in particular um, I didn't like a certain thing that actually happened in the novel, which is miscommunication. I feel like miscommunication could be obviously cleared up if these two characters actually sat together in a room and sat down and had an open conversation. But when miscommunication is used as a plot line or a reason of conflict, it definitely infuriates me. So it definitely impacted my rating and lowered it from a four stars to a three stars. And then this one also had a darker element to it too as well because we have a crazy ass stalker. So the last book in the series is called Duke Most Wanted and our main heroine is in love with our main hero but our main hero doesn't really realize anything about her, doesn't really pay attention to her and so they kind of form a friendship and that's it. But she is going to be happy with what she gets because they at least can be together as friends. What actually happens is that our hero is going to inherit an estate and suddenly he needs a lot of money. And in order for him to get a lot of money very quickly, it requires him to actually marry someone rich. And then enter our main heroine who is his best friend and who he believes is super rich. And this seems like it's going to be a match made in heaven and that they were going to be perfect for each other. But our main heroine is actually holding on to a very deep, dark secret. And it's not only until when things may be too late do they realize that something might be wrong with our heroine. And for this one, I actually ended up giving it two out of five stars because the plot twist and the main reveal of what actually happened with our heroine and like what she actually did really like made me super confused. The main plot twist of this book really lowered my rating for this novel because it came out of left field. I didn't expect it. There was really no indication of like our main heroine having such history and such past that it made me very kind of angry. And I also didn't really like the fact that um, our heroine was clearly in the wrong, but then our hero was kind of like apologizing to our heroine, which made no sense. I'm a stickler for people who have to accept blame and then also who have to grovel in order to make things right. And this was definitely not 
right in my eyes. Like I felt like she should have groveled and she should have apologized more. And then um, this was the conclusion of the story. So we finally figured out which one of the girls will gain the fortune of the family um, owed by the grandfather. So overall, this series, as you can tell, I gave two books three stars and the last book two stars. Would I recommend you to read this series? Probably not. If you have it on your TBR, probably put it in the bottom of your TBR. It was still in a very enjoyable read. Remember how I talked about how the first half of the book of each book was really good? Yeah, so it's still worth you to read the first half of the book, but just keep in mind that the later half might be more disappointing. Overall, I still like Celise Bradley's writing and I want to see if her other works would be a better choice for me. But that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful and added some more books to your TBR and I'll see you guys again later with another author's guide or another video. Bye. <music>